All right, let's talk about space. So I'm here to talk about a new golden era of space that is happening right now as we very speak. Uh, first, just a little bit more about myself. Uh, my name is John Gedmark. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Astronus. We build small satellites that bring broadband internet to some of the most remote and underserved parts of the world. And I was very fortunate to get a front row seat to the entire birth of this new industry when I was at the Commercial Space Flight Federation. And before that, I was director of rocket flight operations at the XPRIZE Foundation. And yes, I am a rocket scientist. So I want to just highlight three very new developments that have had a huge impact. First, human space flight. So I just want to point out, this is a real picture. This is real. People built this. This is a spaceship that is now taking people into space, starting with Richard Branson himself, of course. That is a huge deal. It has been uh, an incredibly inspirational uh, uh, development for everyone in the industry and has resulted in a whole generation of talented young people, myself included, uh, starting new companies in this industry. Second, small launch. We can now launch small satellites on demand very rapidly and very responsively. We've never been able to do that before. Uh, and third is launch reusability, which is already driving down launch costs by a huge amount and opening up an explosion of activity in space. Uh, so we now have a, a very clear read on where things are headed in this industry. So in comparison to how things have been in the past, the future of space is small, it is fast, and it is flexible. Uh, on the spacecraft side, the world has completely changed thanks to an array of new technologies that have all come to fruition right around the same moment. And that has allowed us to do new things with small satellites that could never be done before. So you now have a huge array of companies. And what's really impressive about this list is the, uh, the extent, the, the variety of capabilities that are being deployed in commercial space. You have broadband internet, you have remote sensing and earth imaging, uh, you even have a synthetic aperture radar, something I think we never thought a new uh, small company could go and do, and now they're doing it. Um, so uh, I will just point out, now I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing at Astronus. Uh, these companies are all in low Earth orbit. Uh, and what we realized was that there was a missing piece. In some of the higher orbits uh, that are more difficult to get to but are still incredibly valuable, no one was going and taking a small satellite approach. So that is what we set out to do at Astronus. And the question was, why is nobody else doing this? Uh, and the answer is that it is hard, very hard, for a variety of reasons. You have an incredibly harsh radiation environment up in these higher orbits. Uh, you need more advanced propulsion systems in order to get up there. Uh, and the list goes on and on. Um, and that is why, uh, over, the, over the decades, since we started traveling to space, all the satellites that have been put up in these higher orbits have been these behemoth satellites. So you look at this, this is a, this is a very recent picture. I think this is an Airbus satellite. They're typically only built by a handful of companies in the entire world. They cost hundreds of millions of dollars uh, on the commercial side, and then on the military, national security side, it's in the billions of dollars for a single satellite. And they take years and years to build. I mean, five, six, seven years at best. And so we set out to do uh, this, but with a small satellite approach that we could do much faster and at much lower cost. And I'm very excited to say that we did it. We developed a new class of satellites for these higher orbits that no one else had ever done before. So I'm, I'm incredibly excited to say that we're launching our first satellite in a couple months. Uh, for the U.S. state of Alaska, uh, and then shortly after that, we'll be launching another satellite for Peru. And I just wanted to highlight Peru here because of the massive impact that we will have in this country. You think about Peru, it's a country of about 30-something million people, and still a third of that country does not have broadband internet. More than 10 million people are not connected today. And we're going to change that with a new dedicated satellite for Peru. It's the first time they've ever had their own satellite just for them that will blanket the country in broadband internet and get millions of people online in a way that they've never been before. Uh, and this is a huge opportunity. If you look at the Perus of the world, if you look at countries like Peru, 
around the world and how much demand there is, right? This, is real, this chart is uh, real data from Cisco where they took networking uh, data traffic, uh, off, uh, data off of their uh, network, and they were able to show that the world's demand for broadband data has been growing at an insane exponential rate, 33% year-on-year growth. And that is just showing no signs of stopping. Then uh, the next part of the story is that there came a day where the US government came and knocked on our door. And I think in our business, if you're doing things right, if you're developing real new cutting edge technology uh, in space, that is inevitable. That is, that is what's going to happen. And so uh, we, we had a request for help. And the reason for that is we have a problem. China is launching a huge amount of assets into space, of new capabilities. If you look at this chart, you'll see it over the last uh, several years, last four years, China has been launching, doing more space launches than any country on Earth, including the United States, which I think is a fact people just weren't even aware of. People had no idea. Uh, and so the question is, well, what are they putting up with, this, with all these launches? What are these satellites uh, that they are putting up into space in huge numbers? And the answer uh, is basically everything. So you can see they are launching a new uh, secret military space plane, uh, new constellations for Internet of Things. This one's for, for future self-driving cars, uh, uh, huge uh, military satellites for communications and for other things. Uh, and now things are really starting to get uh, pretty, pretty interesting and, and frankly a little dicey. This is open source, real data. Uh, this plot shows two Chinese satellites that were launched into GEO. Uh, chasing and being chased by a U.S. national security satellite. And these satellites are getting incredibly close together in a way that is very concerning. We, we now have very real concerns with the, chi with the Chinese capabilities that they're putting up and the potential for them to pose a threat to some of our most valuable assets and most valuable capabilities. I mentioned we spend billions of dollars on putting up even a single satellite in some cases, so you can imagine the cost uh, if, uh, if there was to be a real threat there. Um, and uh, this, it, it, it actually wasn't clear what we were going to do about it until uh, a man named General Hyten, who is one of the most well-respected uh, military leaders to ever work in space, finally drew a line in the sand. And he said, I will no longer support the development of big, fat, juicy targets, which I think tells you all you need to know about how our adversaries think about our big satellites that are up there. So. Uh, uh, and, 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 and these are the, you know, these are the only satellites that we've been launching. I mean, this, this, is, this is the problem. You can see again, these are uh, behemoth satellites. So we got a phone call uh, from, uh, this is General Gutlein visiting our satellite factory in San Francisco. We got a call from his staff. They said, hey, the, the general would like to come and visit you and uh, hear more about your company, see the facilities, and maybe see if there's something that we could work on together because we want to, uh, he has a goal of achieving resiliency, uh, what he calls resiliency by 2026. So resiliency of our satellite constellations and our military capabilities. Uh, and we said, uh, of course, yes. Um, actually, well, maybe not of course. There's a lot of Silicon Valley companies that uh, I think, unfortunately, choose to not work with the US government. Uh, and that is, you know, that's their right to do so. It's a free country. Uh, the US government asks for help. You can say no or you can say yes. And, uh, and we decided to say yes. So uh, I'm very proud to say that visit uh, was extremely fruitful. And we are now on a new contract uh, that General Gutlein was able to put in place in just six weeks from when he visited. Uh, and we are off and rolling on that. And so I think that, that is really the, the conclusion here, that while, yes, China is putting up a large number of new satellite assets and new capabilities that are of concern, the United States has a secret weapon. And that is venture-backed companies that are spending their own money, uh, uh, these, are, these are private dollars, to rapidly innovate and can move at lightning speed. And I think that is something that the Chinese will never be able to match. So we should be very proud of that and we should make use of it. Uh, and that is why I am, I am uh, I think, very confident to say that if space is a contested domain, that we will win. Thank you very much. I'm John, CEO of Astronus. Feel free to come find me if you want to talk about this more. I'll be around.
Thank you again.